So, back to this. So this is going to be the second part of the video. So this is, uh, I'll give you some details as it's assembled, and then I'll go into what's on the table, and then I'll disassemble the whole thing, and then I'll show you how to put it together. Um, my suggestions, I'm going to add some suggestions to this, to what you can add to it to assist with this. Um, but before we do that, we're going to take a look at this. Yeah, warm in here. Pump squirting. Seeds are started. I got to get my topsoil. So when you get this, uh, I'll show you in the next segment how these things are packed. But looking at the shape of that, we'll back up and show you the shape of that. That's not exactly in a curl. Okay, it, it is curled, but it's it's got some weird shape to it. And, and to my understanding, I, I had some difficulty understanding how things went and what went. But if you look at the top up here, okay, you look at the shape of that, and then you look at those little round things right there. Okay, so a resourceful person is going to understand that this little catch right here, it goes up towards the little white cap. And I like to call this the bat wing. So the bat wing is going to have a round point at the bottom of it. And then at the top of it, it's going to be rounded off. So get a good look at that shape right there. So the scoop portion is at the top. So the scoop portion is at the top. And the tab is at the bottom. So this is the other wing. This is the outside of the wing. And then the inside of the wing is here. So this is the inside of the wing. This niche or notch goes up. This notch goes up. So then we'll rotate this thing around and we'll show you the other side. So we see that this is rounded. There's no tab there. And then the notch is up, the notch is up, and then the tab is down. And the tab is down. So the bat wing, so if you look at the shape of that, that goes to the outside and then the tabs go to the inside. Now, sarcasm. Is the hard hat there's my humor if you don't feel comfortable with being around things that can jab you in the eye there's also a full face mask because there are threaded rods at the end of it and there are points at the end and you're gonna have your face up here doing things so if you have the capabilities of taking this and attaching it to a base like this or attaching it to something to where it'll hold it upright so you don't have to use both hands, I would suggest that. But I'll give you another look at this. As explained, the scoop is up at the top and you're going to have to reshape this entire thing because this is actually rounded out like a hard hat. So you see that shape on that hard hat, it's sort of shaped and it's dished just like that, okay? So if, if you do understand what about hard hats and things of that nature. So, so these two components are packed together. I did not show you that, but when you, when you buy the unit, it's a Tulip wind generator. This is a 400 watt, two of them are 800 watts. So uh, if you're running a well pump or something like that, there are solar well pumps that, that run on, on low amperage. Um, but this is going to be from wind power to storage, and I explained the three-phase wire system. Now, these threaded rods have these right here, and then you got caps. Now, I've given, shown you about the ohms meter, and I'm going to definitely suggest a pair of gloves. This is a rubber mallet, and this right here is a metal bar. Okay, now the point behind the metal bar is to emulate this metal bar. This is a heavy-duty metal bar. This is a lighter-gauged metal bar. Okay, now the purpose behind this, I'll explain that once I get this all taken apart. But screwdrivers are very important because you have a handle, and then, of course, you have a 13-millimeter wrench. That 13-millimeter wrench fits these nuts right here, and it also fits these out here. Having a ratcheted is very, very easy, so I'll explain how to spin a nut onto a threaded rod, but once you put this on there, you can do what you need to do. 
So having something to put all your parts in or, or having your parts in something to where you don't lose them, that's cool. Uh, beverage or medication if you require. I'm going to suggest something like this for you to either sit on while you're doing this or something to stand this on because you're going to have to stand it upright. Now I'm suggested taking the metal plate, putting the metal plate on it and putting the nuts through it. That way you have sort of a standoff so you don't cut and damage those wires because you're going to have to bend these things and we'll get to that here shortly. So I'm going to take this whole thing apart. I'll give you a backup view of this. So this is the entire unit. I don't have this on wide, so it's it's crimped up. So that's the entire unit. That's the entire unit installed. This is from a box, and this is purchased from eBay for roughly two hundred and I think nine dollars, so two hundred and ten dollars. This is unbranded, so these are new to the systems. I would suggest if you're going to go full off grid to have wind and solar so you can have the benefit of both. So when the wind's not blowing in the summertime, you've got the solar and in the wintertime, you've got the wind and the solar. So you can have the best of both worlds to charge your house batteries. Vibration, vibration dampening, the actual numbers, if somebody wants to go ahead and, and put one of these systems up and then check to see what type of uh, power is coming out of this, if it is actually a full 400 watt unit or if it's just not, but we understand that it is a 12 volt unit and that 12 volt unit will charge your batteries. I repeat, that 12 volt will charge your batteries, so I'll hop off here and get to disassembling and have everything on the table here so i'll try to do the wide to see if the wide looks better all right so if you can survive past the roosters what i've done is i've taken the acorn nuts off so just to give you an idea of just how far you're going to have to bend that that's what that metal looks like we're going to start at the top okay i'm going to go ahead and tell you that before i do the complete disassembly but you see how far away that is so you see where this is at right and you see how far away this is from that so when you look at this when you start putting this together you're going to think that this thing does not go together and you're probably going to fight it pretty hard uh, but you see that rod right there and you see how far away that hole is down here so this hole right here that tab and you see how far that is away you're going to look at this and scratch your head and try to figure out what you did wrong but don't contact the manufacturer. It is not manufactured wrong. You're going to have to bend this thing. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm showing you the shape of this because of the fact that when these come out, they're wrapped almost as tight as this. Okay. So they're, they're pretty small. I mean, it, 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 it almost looks like a stove pipe with, with things on it. But if you see how far away that hole is from that, you're going to need to understand that you have to pull this into this. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so depending on who you purchase this from, this is the unbranded. So this is what it looks like when it's in the box. You'll see a description of it. So it'll just be this, and you'll see those holes right there. Okay, so those holes, they're not straight on that. So this one goes over this direction, this one goes in this direction, and then that one goes in the direction. So it sort of spirals around it, okay? So that's the purpose behind this right here. Now when they come in the wrapper or in the package, they'll be compressed together. So you're going to have to bend them. And you see what I've done here in order to get those threaded rods through it. So I'll walk you through that, but the first thing we're going to pay attention to is these threaded rods. So there is a brief instruction, depending on who you buy this from, and it'll tell you, it'll show you this. So this right here is going to go in here. So the threaded rod goes in the hole, and it goes like that, okay? So your metal wing, so that part right there is going to be in between here. All right, and you're going to have one of these washers in here like that. So if you want to bend that washer a bit to match that, you can. So this washer is going to be behind that, and then you'll have your threaded rod protector. So you might want to seal the ends of this in case water gets in there. And then you're going to have a nut at the end of it. And the reason why they do that 
is because of this acorn nut right here. So then what you'll do is you'll take that acorn nut and you'll be threading that acorn nut on the end of this. If I can thread it without looking at it. So you'll be threading that acorn nut on the end of that and right in between here, you're going to have that metal sandwiched in between there. Okay. So what you would want to do is possibly back that off a bit to where you got enough space right there. So if you look at the thickness of that washer and then you look at the thickness of the metal, so they're about the same. Okay, so you'll need to make adjustments, so you'll be adjusting things. So we'll do, uh, we'll do a brief measurement, and the reason why that they're telling you to do that is because of the fact that you're going to have spacing distances here. So uh, we'll take a look at this and look at the spacing distances right there. So we're a little over a half, so if I can count my little lines right there. All right. So I think that's an eighth. So there's a sixteenth, a quarter, an eighth. So I think I think that's an eighth. So anyway, if you can if you can read mathematics right there, I'm not my brain's not working right today. I can't remember if this was eighth, sixteenths, or quarters. So you got an eight, sixteenth, and a quarter, and a thirty-two, thirty-second. So that could possibly either be a sixteenth or a thirty-second. I don't think there's 30 marks right there, so I think there's probably 16 marks. I don't know. Count those marks, but that's uh, that sort of the distance from that to that. And I would probably put, I don't know, maybe about a 16th. Yeah, so I would probably put about of a 16th inch gap right in between this right here to allow for this right here. I don't know what gauge that is. I'm not sure if that's an 18 gauge or if that's a bit thicker than an 18 gauge, but... But you have all of these right here. So what that is, is that's the spacing that goes from this to this. Okay. So you have a, a threaded rod. So let me grab one of these threaded rods. So one of those threaded rods is going to go in here. It's going to go in there like that. And it's going to cover up the threads on this. Now that's, that's purely up to you. But, but understanding that moisture can get inside this. But this thing, the whole thing is going to be spinning. But if moisture gets inside that, it's going to cause that to rot or to rust. And, you know, I used to work in electroplating and things like that. And, and sometimes these threaded rods, they'll, they'll be able to last. So I did that. So they'll actually be able to last, and sometimes they won't be able to last. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the orientation of this. Now, I, I had a little bit of an issue with this by looking at the instructional diagram. Uh, so it's it's not in paper, so it doesn't come with the unit, uh, but what it is is it's in print uh, So we'll back up a little bit So the bat wings you see I've got a bend in that right there so the bat wings They go to the outside. Okay, so these are just little gentle looking bat wings. Okay, and then you have a round corner So just look in the other one and then down here you have a tab Okay you see the shape of that, so I'll, I'll get you a look at that, and it's kind of a spiral, okay? Now, the other side, as I showed you in the previous video, has little lips, okay? So those little lips go up, but the tabs are at the bottom, okay? So that's a tab, and that's a tab, okay? So I'll give you an orientation of that. So you see that uh, weird, uh, I don't know sawtooth looking thing so the sawtooth side goes to the rod okay so how that acts is that goes in there just like that okay so that's what this metal rod is for and as you can see there's curves on the inside of that so if we take that right there you see how that metal rod sticks on that and you see how it's kind of curved so that's also what you can do is you can take a metal rod like that and you can do a little bit of hammering and you can curl that in there like that because those slots right there if you see how I've torn those slots up getting that thing in there like that I actually fought it pretty hard <laughs> I mean I I was fighting this thing pretty hard and then I realized why I was fighting it is because of the fact that these these tab ears right here actually need to be rounded over so what you do is you can if you're strong enough to do this you can hold on to it like this and you can bend 
those tabs right here. So they, they actually kind of need to round ever so slightly. So having a round object like that and then just take a gentle hammer and kind of tap it around to get a nice little smooth connection. But you can also do that by using the threaded rod. And I'll show you how to do that as soon as I get all this set up. Now you got two of them. Okay, and the orientation is going to be pretty interesting because when you put this together, you'll have that round threaded rod and then you need to flip flip that one over so then you'll have that tab at the bottom facing this way and you'll have that tab at the bottom so then you'll have that structure in the middle like that. Okay, so that's how that works. So I'll... Put this on the ground and give you a better idea how to orientate it because that's sort of what I fought with. So here's that orientation. So that tab is going to go that way so it looks like a big S. Okay, remember that. But remember that tab right there goes to the bottom and that tab goes to the bottom and that tab goes to the bottom. And then those sawtooths go to the inside. So I'll show you how to start this and then bend it into shape. And then you can choose if you want to pre-bend it or if you want to bend it by the method in which that I'm showing you. So this was the best possible method uh, that I found, which was taking that base. So I've taken the two flanges, as I've described, put the two flanges together, and now I've got the wires down here. So if you're on a solid surface, those wires aren't going to get marred up and cut while you're, while you're flexing and fighting with this thing. So... Got a flat washer down here, flat washer, and then lock washer, and then nut. And then I have the motor. And as you can see, as we're looking down here, as I explained before, that hole is not lined up with the rest of them. So if I do a slight rotation, you'll find that hole here. So I'll back up so you see that hole, and there's that hole. And the whole thing spirals down to the bottom. Okay. Now, when you get this, it's going to be flat, okay? So you're going to have to take a trip to Oregon and be in origami with this. So if you don't want to do this, so you'll have to go float your boat. <laughs> so if you want to float your boat or tell this thing to go float its boat. So if, if you want to do uh, your cursing and things like that, be careful around the children. Because to my understanding, AI can't spell curse words. And I think YouTube's having issues with that. So depending on what you think is a curse word. But yet again, we're not harming the windmill when we do this. But yet again, you never know. So I'll get you set up here and uh, I'll show you how to start this whole fiasco. All right, so this is my suggestion. Take the threaded rod, go ahead and put a nut and a washer on it. And go ahead and do the orientation with the tab. And remember the sawtooth as I had explained, goes to the inside, okay? So this is going to be flat. This isn't going to be curved, okay? So you see that curve in that? So there's literally a curve in it because I had to bend that curve in it. That curve is not going to be there. You're going to have to put that curve in it, okay? So this is how you put that curve in it. So this will be the step one for installing the blades. So take a little bit of the threaded rod, put a nut on the end of it, put the washer on it, and go ahead and stand it up on the pedestal. You'll have to have two hands or have to have somebody help you, but you're going to have to have upper body strength and you're gonna have to have hand strength or you're gonna need to use one of those. But this is the easiest way that I found at doing this. So I'll go ahead and grab the other blade and put the other blade on and show you how that goes on. So this is a speed tip about how to put the nut on while you're doing this is just like this okay so you're you're basically just taking your thumb and you're, you're doing a nice walk with it and it's it's going to take it all the way down to the end okay i understand that this is grueling but this is good good hand dexterity for things that you need to do with your hands if you're a hands-on type of person now don't put these tight Okay, so I've got these kind of tight, so you want to kind of back these off a bit, and you want to give yourself a nice gap. Okay, I would say probably back it off about, probably about an inch on both sides. Okay, you're going to want that extra space while you're bending this. Okay, so go ahead and get your washer on there and put that on there, because you don't want to mar up this, 
this really bad. So that's what that's going to look like, okay? My horrible camera work, but you see how that looks right there. So you got, you got the tabless ends, so you've got the smooth ends. So we're going to go ahead and rotate that, and we'll show you how that looks. But that curve is not going to be like that. It, you're actually going to have to bend this out because it's going to be making contact with that. And if you see that big scratch right there, that's exactly what that looks like. Okay, so I'll give you a bit of better idea about how what we got going on here. So I'll back up a bit. Hopefully that thing won't fall down, but that's that's how we got that. Okay, so then I'll show you how to manipulate the rest of these in here. So, so get your ovaries ready. So... So those ovaries are going to be needing, so so if you got some good sized ovaries, so get those ovaries. So you're going to need some ovaries for this. Ovaries. So if you've got an extra pair of hands, it's probably usually best because you're going to have to do some balancing act with this. But what you'll do is you'll take this threaded rod right here and you'll go down to the next hole. Okay, so like I said, they are not straight. They are at an angle, and if you look down that whole thing, it does it does curl, but this piece is gonna be flat. So what you need to do is go ahead and put that in the hole, and then take your rod. So you don't wanna push it up against that. You wanna keep it kinda of back, and then take your rod and put it at an angle, and then push it through the other side, okay? So what I had to do is I had to thread it in, but if you look at how marred up that is right there. I actually had to manhandle it and force it into place. So you might actually have to take it and bend it. So if, I'll show you the angle here. So here's the angle. You might have to bend it like this or like this, but you've got the length of that rod to do that. So you have a bending structure, okay? And then once you get it to the inside of that, you might have to thread it in in order to get it to come through the other side, but you wanna give it a good little length right there so you want to give it some distance so you remember that distance that i told you right there so you want to go ahead and do that with the bottom of that okay and then once you get to the bottom of that you're going to take a, a gloved hand and you're going to go to the other side of that and you're going to manipulate that into that hole okay you see how we're not lining up right there so you'll have to back this out away from it so we're going to have to push that threaded rod in there but you see how that right there is getting in the way of that so you'll have to do this in steps okay so there's that threaded rod down there and this is one of the most difficult things to do but you notice how i push that away and you notice how the further distance i got away with that now it's going through the hole okay so the key to this is the distance from here to here needs to be away from that. That way you can move that rod or you can move this in order to do what you need to do. You can also spread these apart up here to give yourself more leeway, okay? Now just make sure this whole thing is loose up here. You don't want to tighten it up. You want to keep it all loose, but you want to also add those washers, okay? So these washers and these nuts as you go you're going to want to add them in there because it's going to keep that thing in place, but you don't want to tighten them down. You want to leave that gap. Okay, so I'm going to finish installing this right here. So it's the same thing. So you might have to do a little bit of jiggling and shaking and moving and manipulating in order to get it through there. But you'll probably have to bend these tabs in as you're doing that. So what you can do is put this up against this piece of metal. And if you've got strong enough hands, you can bend it. Or you can use a little bit of tapping, but then you have to be careful because you got bearings down there and you got wires down there. So I'll go ahead and cut this off and I'll put this rod in the rest of the way and put the bolts on it or put the nuts on it. Okay, so here's Russ's installation tip. So I'm standing right here or if you've got a bad back or if you have some other problems, you can probably do whatever you need to do in order to do what you need to do. So so you can actually take the whole thing and you see what i've got going on down there and you can go ahead and spin the whole thing without having to walk around it okay so this is where we're at so far i'll give you an upside view and you see how these rods 
are going in different directions but you see how none of these right here are, are lined up to these and as this is curled in this rod is going to be sort of towards the end of this so the top of this is actually going to go together a pretty easy but then when you get to the rest of it but you don't want to install these rods in the end of these just yet okay and make sure you got gloves on because you can cut your hands unfortunately like i said i used to work for an electroplating so my hands have been cut and sliced up and and all kinds of weird things so if, if you if you got weird little rough hands like mine so but you still can cut yourself and bleed but that's that's what that looks like down there okay but don't tighten these down as i'm going to continue to repeat that don't tighten those down have some sort of scratch repair because you will possibly scratch this up and be careful with your eyes and your hands because you can bludgeon yourself with these now i've got one more to go down there so i'm going to go ahead and pick this up and put this on something like this because i've got a gimped up back because i'm sort of missing some parts back there and i don't need to be bent over so i'll get back to you here in a second so being able to pick this thing up at this point becomes very complicated because you got to use these threaded rods but like i said because these right here those tabs right there are sort of oval but you notice that tab does line up but what's going to happen is because of the shape of this you're going to be off like that so you're you're going to be looking at things and trying to figure out why they don't fit and why they don't go where they need to go but as I had stated before, take the metal rod, put it in the hole, and just back it up away from it, okay? So you're going to pull the whole thing away like that so you get a nice little gap in there. And then when you put the rod in the hole, okay, you see that angle that I've got this at? You want to angle it and you see where it's going into that hole right there, okay? So once you get that into the hole, you can thread it in there. But you see where I'm going with my hand, okay? So I'm going out with my hand. See how that does that? And it puts it into place, okay? So you got to be careful with that. And then you can start threading it in. And it'll come out the other side. So you'll actually hold on to that rod right there. And you'll do sort of a tweak bend, okay? So you see what I'm doing with that? And if we can get to the other side of that... You might have to fight with it a bit. So I'm going to do some weird jiggling with the camera, but you see how that rod's coming out the other side of that. Okay, so you want to give it... I don't know, give it probably about two inches. And this is the part where you need to wear your gloves, because these threaded rods can have little pieces that can cut you pretty bad. I mean, I've, I've actually had some pretty nasty slices on my hands from some half-inch and some one-inch rods, and... When you're electroplating and things like that and you're picking up about a 105 or 110 pound threaded rod that's about a half inch an inch or a two inch in diameter depending on the length just the weight of that rod's going to cut into your hands okay so there's the end of that rod and as i had explained before you can literally turn the thing and since i'm doing this with one hand you can literally turn it and bring it to the other side of that okay so you see how that is right there and then what you want to do is you want to manipulate that and you want to grab a hold of it so i can't do this with one hand that you're going to have to have two hands to do this so you see how far away that thing is from there okay so that's that's where these gaps up here come in at okay so the further away that you are from that the better okay so now we've got a we got a nice gap so now what we need to do is we need to put that rod in that hole right there and this is how we do it okay so what we want to do is you see that tab right there you pull that tab away from the body and then you look down in there and you notice that it, it kind of sort of goes into place it gets it gets a lot closer okay so that right there so you see how i did that i just lifted up on that but you see those gaps right there okay so we got some nice gaps and we got an angle on that okay and then you go down there and you see how it's getting close to that hole and then what you do is you see how badly i've torn up that hole then what you do is you thread that rod through that hole 
okay so you got to manipulate it jiggle it around and move it around but this is the best thing to do and as long as you get it through that hole but you see the angle where the threads are on that and you see how steep of an angle that is but you'll notice that once you get it together it it, it actually goes together it just doesn't make sense the way it is but I will put the threaded rod through the hole and then put the nuts on it and then I'll show you how the bottom part goes together. Okay, so I'm going to show you the hand position. You'll have to put your hand right here. So you see that sawtooth right there. And you see that threaded rod. You'll have to put your hand right here on this one. Okay. And then I'll rotate it around right here and you'll have to grab a hold of that threaded rod on this side. And you'll have to put your hand on that threaded rod on this side, and you'll have to manipulate this blade. Okay, so you'll have to lift up on the blade and pull in, okay? So all of your, your angling is going to be right here where this hand is at. So you see we're one, two, and three down. So that'll give you enough to do what you need to do. So I'll show you the orientation. The hand's on that side. And then the other hand's on this side, and then you'll be on that threaded rod. So you see the angle that I'm going in at, okay? You see that angle right there. So you will have to bend this ever so slightly. So if the manufacturer is taking a look at that, we need to open that up just a little bit. But if you do pre-bending, you won't have to do that, okay? So there's the angle of that rod, and I'll go ahead and finish putting that rod through and show you with the angle in which that goes through and show you that it will straighten out after you do that. Now what's going to help you here is you see that gap, that big gap that I got there, but you see them weird angles that I'm going in at? So you see, you see how much I've had to open that up, and then we go to this side, and you see how that threaded rod is pushing into that body. But like I said, whenever you get these blades, they're going to be like pipe curled. They're, there isn't going to be a twist in them. And you're going to have to open them up in order to do that. So you'll have to grab a hold of that right there. And you'll have to grab a hold of this right here. And you'll have to spread them apart in order to get them to open up. Because your threaded rods are going to make contact with that bat wing right there. Okay. So that's, that's the angle. So you see the angle there, and I'm over explaining because I, I like to over explain things, but but that's how that works. Okay, and I'll, I'll finish getting this thing through here, but you're going to fight with this a bit. Okay, you will fight with it. I'm going to tell you that because you have to bend this thing. So you see how that curls. See how it curls around it. I mean, literally, it, it literally curls. So it twists. So this, see how far that is at the top? And then we go down to the bottom, you see how far that is off. So that's, I would say that's a good couple inches, inches of a twist in that thing. So that, that blade actually has to have a twist in it, and that's why there's those tabs in there. So it has to be curled and twisted. So since I've probably put you to sleep, I'll finish this up. All right, so here's my little helpful tip. Um... As you can see, that little wear mark right there. So we've got some spaces and some gaps here. Once you get to that one right there, what you can do is you can tighten that nut down right there. And then you can tighten that nut down right there. So if you can't get that rod to go through, then what you can do is pinch them together. But what's going to help you with this is spreading these pieces of metal apart. And then pushing them back together. So once once you get the threaded rod through there and you push that one into place, then you should be able to get that to feed through there a bit better. If you can't, then what you can do is tighten that down and it'll pinch the two of those together and it'll cause that to bend. But you want to be careful because you don't want to break this part of the metal right here because this whole thing is going to be spinning and that can cause a weak point. So what you do is you pinch it together using those nuts to get it to hold together. But as you're doing this, you're going to have to spread and bend on the outside of these wings. And you have to be careful because this rod can end up in your eye because your head's going to be down here. Okay, so now we have that one in, that one in, that one in. Now, as I stated before, if you take these and you 
screw them together you can literally pinch these two pieces of metal together okay but i would suggest giving yourself a little bit of distance so you can spread these apart because you're going to be you're going to be doing weird angles with this metal because like i said whenever it's in the box this is actually straight and you're going to have to twist that to go around that so that's why i stated starting at the top now the weird thing that's about to happen is what you need to do when you get to the bottom of that but also be careful you've got a rod sticking out here but you see the the distance from here to here is different okay because you're going to have to grab a hold of this and pull it into it and how you do that is you're going to have to grab a hold of that threaded rod while this is all loose so you want to make sure this is all loose so you'll have to grab a hold of this threaded rod and grab a hold of this and you'll have to bend it to catch that okay now you can do that on a flat surface or you can use your body so you can literally take your arm and put it around it and shoulder the thing <laughs> that's that's the complicated part that's that's the part that you're going to fight with is is bending all of this into shape but if you do it at the top and you start at the top and then you work your way down what it'll do is it'll start to contort the shape of it okay so don't put any of the acorn nuts don't put any of that on there make sure that you get this on there and bend the wings into place and what we're going to do here to get to the bottom of that is we're going to take that right there and we're going to put it on that milk crate so we're going to flip the entire thing around and then we're going to put that bottom rod in all right so i'm holding it with my knee and i've got it down here this is a bit easier to do when you got two hands but you see that hole right there okay so then you see this hole right here and you got to take this rod right here and you got to put that rod through that hole so as i stated put it in here okay and then you see we're not even at the right angle here so i'm probably not going to be able to do this with uh with one hand but as you can see i'm threading that rod in and what you can do is you can use that rod as a lever okay so let's see if I can switch hands and see if I can manipulate that with with a camera in my hand. Okay, so so you see how we got the edge of that threaded rod in there. So that's see how we did that. So then I've got my hand on it and I got my thumb on it, but the reason why it's not angled up is because I'm putting weight on the blades. Now, if it's standing straight up and it's off the, off the blade, so if it's sitting like that, this is all going to go together a bit easier. That's why I just explained that little stump of wood down there to hold the thing together. So I'll go ahead and put this other rod in here because this actually requires two hands and I don't have a tripod anymore. Okay, so it, it actually, uh, how can I say it, it kind of goes in there pretty easy. So what I had to do was I had to put my hand right here, and I had to go in this way. So if you see, you see my hand, I had to go this way with it in order to twist the blade in order to get that to go through. But it, it actually goes through pretty easy. Of course, I've already pre-bent it. So you can actually see the thread marring right there. And I've actually had to thread these rods through those holes in order to get everything to bend. And then once I got everything into place, I kind of bent it by hand. But then if you take those nuts and those washers, like I'm pointing at down there, the nuts and the washers will kind of bring it all together. So you'll tighten them down and then loosen them up. So each step that you go through, so the first one, you'll put it on, tighten them down, and then loosen them up. The next one, you'll tighten them down and loosen them up. The next one, tighten them down and loosen them up. And then the final one, tighten them down and loosen them up. And that's just getting the blades in orientation, and we'll go to the next step. Okay, so this is the second time around, and I actually fought with that pretty decently. Because of the bend that you have to orientate this now putting it through those holes right there putting the end rods through those holes can actually help you out but you see how far off we are at that end and we see how far off we are at that end right there so i'll go ahead and finish putting that through but that's where the screwdriver comes in handy if i can balance this so that's where the screwdriver comes in handy so you can get in here and pry that away from this metal rod so you'll actually put push it away 
because like I said, the distance between here and here is actually going to help you with putting this together. But as I stated before, this thing has to be bent as you put it together. So I'll, I'll show you a brief description on how to do that. So common sense will tell you with that. Um, if we are playing with common sense, I don't have common sense. So I actually sometimes have to have instructions. Uh, so you'll have to grab a hold of the rod right here. And you'll have to grab a hold of that metal and you'll have to pull that metal into that rod because now what you're doing is you're shaping that blade. So if you see that that sort of uh, half moon shape right there, you'll have to put that half moon shape into these uh, two scoops at the top. Uh, so when you get to the bottom, you'll be fighting with that. But as I stated before, once you get it through the hole and once you manipulate that in there, you'll have to thread that rod through so you'll literally have to twist this rod i can do this while i'm holding it in my head so you see how i'm twisting that rod so you literally have to thread it through and you, you can do some jiggling and you can jiggle and shove on it and when it starts getting tighter bound up then you'll just have to lift this up and push it back that way in order to thread it through but you you can have to be careful with this because you can sort of bend this rod by doing it but you can use this rod as leverage in order to get things through the holes and get them through there so i'll go ahead and push that rod through and get some nuts on it all righty so this is a commodore and a pyrenees mix and if you know what those are those are puppies these are the surviving puppies. These right here are rare characteristics. And she's had two of them with black. And she's got three of them. She's a very well-mannered dog. So this is a shepherd dog. So this is a livestock herding dog. She is a Commodore Pyrenees mix. I like to call her a wolfhound because she likes to snap her little jaws. But these are Pyrenees characteristics. And these are rare Pyrenees characteristics. And there's three of them here. Oh, we look at them back paws. Some of them got white paws and some of them got black paws. So you see the toes. So they're going to be a Commodore mix. And I'll show you a picture of the father. All right. So this is the father. He is a Pyrenees. You see the size of my hand. He is, his head is about hip level. So there's the size of his body. He's still a young pup. So they're are the feet characteristics here are the ears he doesn't have the really big ears but he's got the dark skin as you can see on the snout and his feet are light colored and he can stand up so he's a dingbat very energetic and here's the mother they are found in dent county missouri i will meet you at walmart and they have a price tag and here are the puppies by themselves as we all know the Pyrenees they have uh, rare characteristics the black ones usually with Pyrenees and purebred Pyrenees you'll get one of those puppies unfortunately she lost a couple of them so we've got little black snouts we got little black snouts and we got light colored feet and then we got dark colored feet so we got we got black patches, but then we got these. Now, as you can see with the wavy hair on this one, it's going to be a bit different. You see that one's got some wavy hair, and this one's got short hair, and this one's got short hair, and this one's kind of got wiry hair, but you see the skin color there. So that's the rare one, and that's the rare one. Where? Rare. So these are the puppies. Three whites. Two black and white, two black and white. Now with these being Mastiff, so their father is a Mastiff and their, or excuse me, Pyrenees. Their father is a Pyrenees and their mother is half Pyrenees and half Commodore. So they both have herd dogs, but they're going to have the mass. And these, these puppies are, oh shoot, I would say they're just a little over a month old. So the eyes are open. And there's no teeth. Well, there's a little bit of a tooth there. 
So they're just starting to get those little snappers in. So they'll be winged here before shortly. So that's a rare and that's a rare characteristic. So those are both Pyrenees. So those are going to be very large dogs. Uh, Pyrenees are large dogs. Uh, Commodores are a little bit slimmer, but they're also very tall dogs. Uh, the Commodore, uh, when she stands up, her head comes about to my rib cage. So it's, she's she's pretty tall when she's sitting down. And then the Pyrenees, his head comes to about mid waist, and I'm about five foot seven. So those are going to be some big puppies. Okay, so if you haven't cursed the day that you were born, but understanding that. Um, you will have to misshape in the metal so that's that's the biggest part about it is is fighting with it and that's why i explained to you about the gaps and things like that so you'll have to move this metal in so holding on to it at certain points and manipulating it and twisting it but like i said if you see that spiral that's 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 the big part because you have to put that spiral into that metal okay and you see how see how that tab is bent up right there so i'll the next step is once you get the rods in there you'll you'll have to make sure that that uh you put these in place because the edge of this can actually stop the bottom of that from going in because it has a spiral in it okay and you see how how far we are away from those two right there and that's that's damn near almost six inches six to eight inches from there to there and we've got the exact same thing right there because of the shape of this thing you, it's actually what causes the most of the headache now don't uh, don't worry about your spacing with your rods just yet but go ahead and at this point in time go ahead and uh, do do your tightening down okay so go ahead and bring everything together and this is this is where the speed wrench comes in at because what we're going to do is we're going to tighten all this down. You have to excuse me a minute while I spin this. So then we'll go on each side. Now I've already got this put in there. I've already got that in there and then I've got the other two but these are all open. But here's where we're going to bend or put the shape into the unit. So if you do this little by little as you're going through, so you'll be tightening it up and loosening it, tightening it and loosening it, tightening it and loosening it. So you'll do that all the way up and down through that until you can get that gap out of those blades. So you will take this gap and these blades right here will be all the way up against this rod. So I'll go ahead and do that. So if you can see down that shaft right there, we're getting there, okay? So you definitely have to have some patience or you have to you have to have good medication sometimes. So if you require medications and things like that. So make sure your stress levels are down because you don't want to get mad at this because this this can create free power. I mean, two two hundred and nine dollars and and you get uh, twelve volts of electricity to run lights or to run a battery power system or a battery storage system or or what have you, you know. But the key is, uh, this would be your holding point, and uh, these right here are what you're going to manipulate. So you are going to have to do this with these ever so slightly. So I'll go ahead and tighten those downs and down, and I'll show you how this shape comes together. Alrighty then. So with uh, each break and each step that we're doing, what I'm doing is I'm tightening this one down, and then I'm hopping it on the other side, tightening that one down. And then I'll tighten this one down and then tighten the other side down. And then I'll go to the next one, tighten the one down. So when you get down here, and if you've got that tab bent up like that, what you can do is you can use your screwdriver or you can use your thumb. Okay, so I'll show you how to use your thumb. So you can use your thumb and you can get in there and you can go ahead and bend that tab in. Okay, so it, it, it sort of bends pretty easy uh, unless you, you have bend issues. So you got to be careful because this whole thing will fall over. So grabbing hold of things and, and bending things and, and doing what you need to do in order to get it to shape and go into shape. So you, you'll gently massage the metal into shape. So how can I explain how to do that without, you know, grabbing a hold of the outside right here like this with your hand and, 
and, and putting your knee down here and, and doing some bending and grabbing a hold of that metal rod to get everything to go in shape into shape so i mean you you literally have to flex the entire thing so you ha you have to do a lot of bending and, and things like that in order to put it in place now with my instructions of putting the threaded rods through it and then tightening down and then loosening them up and then going to the next one and then putting the rod through it and screwing it through there and then tightening down and then loosening it up and then going to the next one is actually the best step that I found. So starting at the top and then bring them together and then loosen them up and then bring them together and loosen them up. And, and what that'll do is that'll start start shaping the twist in it. So we'll we'll back up and I'll show you how much of a twist is actually in that thing. I mean, you, you can actually see how how that does what it does. And like I said, when you get these blades, this that edge right there is literally straight. And you actually have to conform it into the shape that it needs to go into. And you can also see down here at the bottom how far we are away from that. So you'll have to grab a hold of that rod. And you'll have to grab a hold of the belly of that. And you'll actually have to twist it into place to get it in there. So I'll, I'll go ahead and tighten this up. And get that taken care of and, and show you what that looks like when it's done so if, if if you've accomplished it so far these tabs down here at the bottom will be ever so slightly bent up uh, but that's that's why we got the rubber mallet so you can go ahead and give it a, give it a little bit of a bang you can give them a, a little bit of some taps in order to get everything to go in place. Okay, so what you should have is, is you see the surface is now rounded. Okay, so you've got different degrees of rounds and that's why these tabs are here. But you see how, how much of a curve in that we have. Because whenever you put these blades on here, it looks like that it doesn't fit together. But uh, honestly, yes, it does. Uh, there is one method where you can put one blade on and then bolt everything down but then you're going to have the loose section on this side over here um i mean you can put one blade on and then put a bolt over here or a nut on this side right here and then and then do your shaping with one blade at a time and then put the other one on the other side and then feed your holes through there I, I, this is the method that i've chose but if you if you can improve my method by all means go ahead and do that so I'll show you down the barrel of what it looks like now. So you'll be able to see the twist in that metal. So you see how that metal so it twists around that. And you see how it kind of stair steps all the way up it. So uh, do a little bit of massaging and, and put it in place. And you'll, you'll feel it kind of pop into place. And you'll see it kind of bend a little bit. Uh, because you see how far away we are down there at the bottom so don't worry about lining things up just yet go ahead and take those threaded rods and start putting them through the holes now that you've got everything sort of pulled together and clamped down on that shaft and i'll show you what that looks like with uh with the next step so here's my tip suggestion on how to do that uh, take your hand with the threaded rod take your other hand with this piece of metal and then move the threaded rod by putting your thumb here and pulling this way or pushing this way. As you can see, that threaded rod was attached right here. So you literally have to put this shape into this. Take one of the acorn nuts and then put the end through the threaded rod and then just put an acorn nut on it and then go down to your next one. You can do the top um, if, if you want to just go down one side of it and do one side of it and then go to the other side and do the other side of it or if you want to do the top so put this one on and then put that one on and then once you get a good shape to the blades um, then you can go ahead and do the rest of your steps now uh, as stated you're going to have one of these metal rods in there and then you're going to have a nut on the end of it Okay, and with with the explain explanation in the beginning of this and then after you put that nut on there The final thing is going to be your acorn nut and making sure you have enough threads in order to get that acorn nut And also your distance is so this is going to be the final assembly But that'll be after your adjustment So you're going to have to go back and loosen these things up and move them around a bit 
So these will have to be loosened up and you'll have to move that rod around a bit to make sure you have enough gaps or spacings on this right here. You can do that with the, the step here. So after you tighten these together and, and pinch it together, you can loosen them back up. And then if you measure, you can go ahead and do your measurement uh, that route and then put your metal rods on. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not rocket science. Uh, manipulate it the way you need to manipulate it. This is just my option. Uh, these are just my steps. These aren't, these aren't carved in stone. You can do one blade at a time, do another blade. You can pre-shape them. Uh, I mean, it's, it's completely up to you. But the final result is going to have that rod with an acorn nut at the end of it with this nut at that end and with this rod protector here uh, but as i stated before uh, i would actually put some silicone or something in this uh, or possibly seal that up because uh, water can get inside of this uh, even if you just fill the entire thing up with silicone and just stick the whole thing on there to make sure that this threaded rod doesn't rust uh, it should last uh, should last quite some time so i'll go ahead and uh, put all those in those holes and get some acorns on them and and uh We'll go from there. So now we've gotten to the last one, and you see how far that is away from that, and it's considerably a lot closer. So we're uh, we're about three to four inches away before we were about eight inches. So I've pushed those nuts uh, on the end of them. So I put the threaded rods through the hole, and I've bottom out those uh, those acorn nuts. Okay. So how you would do this? Is grab a hold of that threaded rod with your right hand and then take your left hand and you're going to want to actually bend it okay so I, I can show you that that it does bend and i can possibly do this with one hand so that's that's exactly what we do right there so i i grabbed a hold of the rod and i put my body up against this right here so see that right there so i used my my rib and my pack and I actually pushed the blade into that threaded rod right there. So now it's got a nice little curve into it. So like I said, you, you literally, you have to shape this thing. And it, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm showing you weird stuff here. So I'm having to balance things with my knees and, and use my feet and my hands. But, but like I said, if, uh, if you got the patience and if you got the time to do things like this and, and 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 understand that 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 angles are very important when you put put acorn nuts on so doing what you need to do and, and getting what you need to do taken care of and then taking your time to do what you need to do so as you see there's a nice little bend in that rod right there so the next thing i'm going to do is now that i've got these acorn nuts is i'm going to go back and loosen all of these up so like i said i'm going to loosen all of these right here up and then we're going to do a bit of a shimmying in order to make sure that these are all straight. Because you can see the bend in that rod, and we still have to put those on. So I'll, uh, I'll show you what happens when we loosen all those up. And that's these right here. So I'll go down and loosen all of them up. So now we're coming to a final end to this. So now that I've adjusted all this, now that we've put the blades into correct shape and orientation... Uh, you'll see that there's some pretty interesting bends and things and, and, and making some tapping with some hammer and, and, and doing some bending with your hands in order to get things to go in shape and, and kind of nudging things a bit. You know, and then, you know, once, once you get that all put together, kind of stand it up and then do some shaking with the blades. So, so you'll be able to stand it up like that and you'll, you'll get to, to orientate the blades a bit. But you'll notice that it's, it's actually in there pretty tight. Uh, so moving it around and making sure things aren't bound up and, and all kinds of nonsense. And you see there's, there is a slight little bit of a curve in that blade right there because this is actually pulling down on that rod. So then we also have a, a structure type situation uh, with these, these types of uh, rod coverings. So the next step would be to put all of those on there and then you're gonna make your adjustments back and forth. That's why we've loosened all of this up. Uh, but also understanding like right here, if you'll excuse the banging,
wonderful camera work, huh? So then what we need to do is, is make sure that the blades are all in orientation so we're, we're not, you know, pinched too far this direction. So we'll be, we'll be curling the blade in that direction. So what you can do is loosen up the ones in the center but leasing, leaving these end caps on and then just take the whole thing and just set it down on the ground, put it on the ground and let the weight of it kind of shift things around and then flip it over on the other side and let the ground kind of shift things. So I'll show you how to do that here to make it a bit easier. So it's not the type of situation where you just, you know, you want to kind of come out here and, you know, beat on it or something like that. But, you know, giving it giving it some nudges and things like that in order to make sure it's it's in place. And, you know, it, you got some bends in it. You want to take some of those bends out. You can use a hammer to kind of kind of shape the thing. I mean, you don't you don't want to do this with it because you don't want to curl it in anymore. But you also want to kind of be careful because... You know, you, I don't know, it's kind of massaging it into place, you know. And if you got things like that, you, know, you can do a little bit of rounding on it. So, like, you see how we got a, a kind of a pinch in that right there? We can, we can take that pinch out by doing that. And, you know, I mean... Do what you need to do in order to shape the thing because what it does is it's going to catch the wind. So that's that's the whole point behind it. But you don't want to have it so bound up or so bunched up that it's misshapen. So you see how it's kind of kinking and pinching right there. So you'll do some adjustments. So you'll have to do adjustments. So I'll go ahead and do the final steps and put the rods and everything in it to show you what the final the final piece looks like. But what you will have to do is you'll have to move those rods back and forth. So if you need to thread it in or thread it out, remember you have that castle nut, or excuse me, you have that uh, acorn nut at the end of it. So you can actually push that rod that way with that side and then push that rod that way with that side. But once uh, once you put the spacers in there and you put the nuts on it, then it, it, it all kind of goes back together. But uh, <laughs> when I took this thing out of the box, I can tell you what, I literally looked at it and I, I questioned, my, questioned my sanity for buying it. And I, I was sort of like about ready to call the manufacturer and I realized that uh, the metal actually has to be bent to go into shape. <laughs> I mean, Literally, you, you see that big cup and those big cups on it. So it, when, you, when you get this out of the box, you'll find out that those shapes and those curves and those twists are not in that metal. You'll have to put those into the metal. And you'll also have to wire it correctly. But, you know, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. Three green wires, three red wires. Each wire goes to each, and then you got a battery positive and negative. So that's the gist of it. So I'll, I'll complete it and show you what the completed excuse me, completed unit looks like. So before I do my final tightening, if I can get this thing to balance up again. So th this is why I said be careful with those wires down there because you're, you're going to be doing some, some interesting metal smith work. So th this is sort of shaping and forming metal. So you actually have to shape and form the metal in order for it to caress it onto it because you have to change the shape of these blades. Uh, so, I mean, doing, doing one blade at a time might be a bit simpler to you, but this is why I have the screwdriver, because like down here, um, I, I sort of bent this up in order to get that blade to go in place, and I did the same thing here, so that washer was sort of stuck in there. So I've had to pop all that back out, uh, so now I'm going to do my final shaping, uh, like with putting it outside and, and taking the bends out of it and things of that nature to get the blades to go where they need to go and then i'll do a final tightening and then that final tightening will have that spacer in there and then it'll have that final nut towards the end of it but but as we see here uh with that shaping there's there's a little bit of a cup a little bit of a cup right here and the reason why that cup's there is because of this down here so this metal is bending in like that in order to make it to this right here so it'll have to come out ever so slightly if i can get it 
to do that with my hand. So it, it'll literally have to be pushed out. So once we put that spacer in there, so we'll pop all this back out. So you'll have to take those acorns back off and then you'll have to do your final shaping at the end of it. So it's, it's sort of gently massaging it back into place and then, you know, massage it into place and then loosen it back up and then massage it back into place. So I, I would say that you're going to tighten these down once and then loosen them up and then tighten them back down again. And they're not really tight, just kind of draw them in and then loosen them up, draw them in and loosen them up as you go down the structure in order to get everything to fit into place. And if you saw my measurements right there, if you get uh, you get one of these little rods right here and you kind of put it in place right there, you see that there's, with that tightened down, there's just enough room to put that other nut at the end of it. But, you know, you don't want to put two, three threads on that. You want that to, to tighten down as much as possible. So making sure that your rod is centered, uh, that's sort of the important part. Because then we go to the other side over here, and we notice that I can't, I can't get that rod to go in there. And that rod's actually making contact with this right here. So, you know, do, do what you need to do. I mean, there's no... There's no actual real way of explaining how exactly you can do that other than just tightening it up, loosening it, tightening it, and loosening it. So, you know, do what you need to do, and and, and uh, it should all go together. So whenever I get finished with it all, I'll, I'll show you the end, the end of it. Hopefully the end of it. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken one side completely out. Okay. And then I took those threaded rods and I pulled them as far away from here as possible. I took this right here, loosened it up away from this, put this on there, and then put that nut at the end of it. And then I adjusted that rod to where that acorn nut will seat all the way up against that nut. But then remembering that we're going to have that much thickness. We're going to have that much thickness between that acorn nut and that right there okay so once you get one side of that done then you can flip it around on the other side and do the exact same thing now once you get this threaded rod and this nut and this nut on here you have your center point but then also then what you do is you then come over here and start tightening this down to where this right here then pulls this into this and then gives you the proper spacing on this side so I'll go ahead and do the other side. So just once you get that side on and once you give yourself enough room for that acorn nut, then uh, give that a little bit of a, a, how can I say, a twist. And give that a bit of a twist to where these two ends are tight together after you put your silicone in there. If you do put silicone in there. And just make sure that this is pushing on this rod so you've got that. So then you'll be able to center it by just tightening this one up. Okay, yes, I over explain a lot of things and I'll explain things twice because visual perception, sometimes a lot of people will say, what? <laughs> or that didn't make any sense. So that's that's why I sort of do uh, the first person thing because it's, it's sort of easier for us to learn that way. So uh, as I showed, once we've uh, beaten the thing into submission and we've bent it all to hell, then we're going to go back and uh, take it all apart and then bend it back to hell, bend it back uh, and then uh, loosen all this back up and then tighten it all back up again. So uh, with those washers right there, sometimes they'll catch on that. So you'll have to take your screwdriver and pop those washers off. Uh, but the, the next step is uh, tightening down the other side and uh, putting the rest of those rods and those acorn nuts on it. And uh, when I get done with that, I'll show you what it looks like. And we are almost home free. So as I said, just put one side on it. Uh, make sure that your cat, your acorn nut at the end of that is is far enough in there to where you can tighten it down. Uh, give it maybe a thread or possibly a half of a thread of, of thickness. You can you can negotiate the end of that acorn nut. Uh, I would probably suggest some uh, thread locker on the end of that, uh, but uh, we'll be tightening that down. And then when you draw this one in, it pinches it all together so it centers it. Uh, so that's uh, that's one side, one side there. So this one right here, uh, you'll need to cinch everything down. So just. Uh, put a wrench here, put a wrench here, tighten it everything together, um, and then give that uh, 
that nut right there a nice little tight tweak and that'll push all that together and like i said silicone on the inside of that or some sort of waterproofer uh, to make sure moisture doesn't get inside that rod um, of course the manufacturer may say to leave it alone and let it stay dry but this thing will be spinning so centrifugal force will force that moisture to the outside of that uh, but as we all understand if there's air inside that with condensation with uh even just the humidity in the air and the temperature fluctuations that's going to cause moisture on the inside of that so i would actually feel a bit more comfortable with filling that entire rod or uh, that that rod cap uh, right there that that piece of pipe um, uh, uh, make sure that that's filled with silicone and, and put a little bit of thread lock at the end of that uh, acorn nut so uh, the inside of that acorn nut doesn't have any type of sealant on the inside of it so i would make sure that that's sealed up so that you should get plenty of life out of it out of this thing so we're uh, we're reaching the final steps and i'm i'm taking that rubber mallet right there and you know you see that tab down there i'm kind of sort of bending everything in place and making sure everything's you know vibration free and making sure everything's sort of straight um, to my understanding, they, they shouldn't vibrate. To my understanding, the tulips don't vibrate that much. Uh, they're actually less vibration. But if you've got everything out of whack and it, if it's not balanced and if those rods are off and things like that, you know, you might have some issues with it. But uh, uh, like I said, uh, be mindful of those wires. So you're actually going to be moving this thing around a lot. I mean, really a lot. And unless you've actually got a hole or something like that, I probably wouldn't be putting a lot of weight and a lot of pressure on that motor down there. So, um, you know, we're, we're getting to the final stage of this to where uh, we'll do some final bending and, and put everything in place. And, and like I said, that, that rod is like way out there, so I have to push that back and, and then, you know, manipulate all of this in place. But, you know, you, you actually have to curve this thing. <laughs> I mean, literally, you have to shape it. So professional installation or, or a willing individual to learn, but making sure that we have a nice instructional video to give people an idea about how to put these things together. So, you know, the thing that I fought with was the orientation of the blades. So the, the sawtooth goes to the inside and the bat wing goes on the outside. So I'll get this finished up and uh, hopefully... Uh, show you a final product and you see my little my little hammer marks in there so you know we're, we're not pavement princess with our with our windmill here this is just a functional 400 watt windmill to charge some batteries so we'll, we'll get this finished so as the rooster continuously crows because that light is always on there but we got uh, peeper frogs so if you can hear the frogs out here <laughs> so you know, it's it's February. We have a, had a very short winter this year, so I would say possibly tabulating up the cold events uh, and the cold weeks were probably possibly three weeks in total. So I've got uh, the hoop house here. So uh, the thing is about these things, and they get hot pretty quick. Uh, so if you got some experience with the green ones, let me know. But uh, this is the uh, the 400 watt windmill, $209 from eBay. This is uh, my instructional video. Uh, my name is Russ. Uh, the uh, gloves, of course, we have some leftover hardware here. So we have uh, two nuts, we have a washer, and we have an acorn, and there's one rod left over. Uh, so. Uh, I don't know you definitely have to know uh you, you have to know what you're doing uh my my opinion on the unit uh i would say that this right here needs to be probably about a half inch longer and this needs to be about an inch longer so that gives a bit more of a span at the top and that'll keep that bend out of that so as you see we've got her all tightened up and she's bent so she's actually sort of curved and bent like that on both sides. But of course, this is a tulip wind generator. So it's it has to sort of have that curve towards the top of it. And uh, we've got we've got the, the big ears at the bottom. And as I said, uh, with installation of that, you see the sawtooth goes against the rod and then the ears go to the outside. So the ears go to the bottom and then the round off goes to the top. So the top is is sort of I don't know. How can I say? it's cone shaped so you will have to uh, manipulate this uh, ever so slightly 
Uh, so with understanding that all of those rods are, yes, they are the same length and uh, with the extra parts right there. So if you do tend to screw something up, you can, you can fix that. But, you know, the final steps are would be uh, taking a wrench and, uh, you know, putting one wrench right here and, and holding that down and tightening that side up and then going to the other side over there and, and, and you know, making sure that these are all tight and, you know, I would suggest some Loctite on the end of that, and of course I would suggest uh, filling this rod full of silicone. So after you get it all put together, you can go ahead and pop that off, and then take this off, and then take the rod, fill it up with silicone. So you'll have some final adjustments and things of that nature. You can also probably take these washers, and you could probably put a curve on these washers so that they'll match that. Uh, but yet again, uh, with just a slight breeze out here, you know, just, just a little bit of a chill in the air, it was actually enough to spin that. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's not much of a breeze. I mean, as soon as you can feel the breeze push, so it gives a little bit of a, a little bit of a push and this, this thing will actually kick on. So, uh, since, uh, since, uh, I am, uh, how can I say an over explainer, um, I'll, uh, show a little bit of a brief of my greenhouse. So I still have to get some topsoil in here. Uh, the lights are on, so the, the frogs are out chirping, so uh, I'm almost to my finalization with this, and, and this is what I've put in the middle for my vining stuff. And, uh, of course, the table don't belong in here, so that'll come out. And then I've got uh, this, this outside here, so I'll also have some vines like watermelons and squashes and things like that that are out here. So they'll, there's going to be a couple more out there, so the whole point behind this is, is to cut the inflation down. <coughs> Excuse me. So with understanding that that the expense of uh, of the goods that we consume these days is becoming rather ridiculous. But but the big problem is 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 the health factor and, and the things like pesticides and herbicides and things like that. And 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 with some of the health problems that I've had in the past, I mean, if 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 I eat fast food, I'm, I'm having some severe problems. I mean, even with eating sugars and things like that and eating pre pre-processed foods it causes a lot of pain and aches throughout my body so you know the less pain I can put myself through the better but but also understanding that we all have to we all have to get up and stay motivated and uh, to explain the rest of the world understanding that you know it's 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 not my advice telling you not to go to a doctor but but understanding that we can take care of ourselves without the extra expense and, and explaining to everyone that that I actually have uh, some natural things going on in my spinal column so in in total in my neck I, I don't have a disc in my neck so there's a disc missing in my spinal column in my neck uh, in my thoracic uh, region there's also a, a disc missing there and then also in my lumbar there's a disc missing there so so i'm uh i'm not no spring chicken but but yet again i'm still able to get up walk around and do what i need to do without having major surgical procedures now i have had reconstructive surgery on my right shoulder because of uh, a shattered uh, rotator cuff in my shoulder uh, so I've also had bicep, uh, bicep, uh, relocation also in my right arm, uh, because of the problems with that. So also explaining to everybody that I've, uh, I have not spent 24 hours in a wheelchair and, uh, I've actually been shot twice in my lifetime and I was able to, uh, to accomplish this, but also understanding that, I actually took some breaks, and, and I'm actually going to, uh, to add an intervention, or excuse me, not an intervention, but uh, an intermission into the center of this. So uh, there, there's, there's, uh, there's a little bit of information, and if everybody uh, understands that we all live on this planet Earth, and we all live here together, no matter what type of race or species that we are, we all need to understand that we all need to work together to make the world a better place for future generations of our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. Because if we keep going with this mechanized world and if we keep poisoning the things that we have and making people sick, you know, just, just to make extra money for everybody and, and, and causing all of these issues and, and you know, creating revenue uh, for companies and businesses, you know, that's that, that shouldn't be something that we should be more concerned about. We should be more concerned about making sure everybody's healthy, making sure everybody's intelligent enough to be able to take 
care of their medical needs and take care of their health without having to pay somebody to do everything. So understanding that the world of payment and the world of taxation is has become... I don't know. It, it's become overwhelming because now it costs way too much. And you got to stop to think that minimum wage is $12 an hour. And people are still having trouble paying their bills and buying groceries. So, so ladies and gentlemen, understanding that just increasing the price, uh, the price of your minimum wage is, is only going to cause corporations to increase the price of goods because now they know you're making more money. So <laughs> understanding that damned if you don't, damned if you do. So ladies and gentlemen, go row your own boat, enjoy your life. And remember, we're all in the same boat when you're rowing that boat. So ladies and gentlemen... This is the Over Explainer Russ with an instruction video on a tulip windmill. And let me tell you, my body is screaming at me right now. That hurt. <laughs> Have an amazing day.